Hi, welcome to the Quantity Survey in Studio. So in this video, we'll be discussing about the major stakeholders involved in a construction project. So we'll understand what each stakeholder does, what their responsibilities are usually, and as a quantity surveyor, what each stakeholder quantity surveyor does during each stage of a project. Let's move into this video. So if you have not yet subscribed to Quantity Surveying Studio, please do subscribe uh, for more quantity surveying related contents and thanks a lot for all the support that is being shown for this channel. So the first important stakeholder that is involved in a project is obviously the client. Someone who or someone for whom the project is being developed. So if you see the buildings, the residential projects, the hotels, it is for someone that is being built. So that is obviously the client. Like for example, if you are building a IT park for Wipro or TCS or Infosys. So Infosys is the client. So they will be having a construction team who will be managing the project, who will be coordinating with the other different stakeholders. So under them also there will be a quantity surveyor or a cost related professionals who will be looking after the budgeting, who will be getting advices from the consultants. That is the next stakeholder that will be looking into. They will be following up for the budget. They will be looking or they will be monitoring the budget if it is inside the budget or not, if it at all it is exceeding the budget. So all these stuffs will be handled by the cost professionals or the quantity surveyors who are under the client side and also the contractual matters. The different contracts will be between the client and the contractors or the consultants. There will be different contractual agreements. So that also will be handled by the construction team of this client. So again, if, for, if it is a residential project in UAE, for example, Damak or uh, Shoba. So these are the major clients. So some clients will have their own uh, department, different departments like the contractors department. So they need not go and search for other contractors or consultants for handling their project. They will be having their in-house uh, contracting team, the execution team, the consulting team. So that again depends on different companies uh, whether they are having it or not or else the client will be giving out the work orders or the contracts to different other major stakeholders. So hope you understood what is meant by client and what a client QS does. The major task is monitoring the budget, issuing the different purchase orders or the work orders to different contractors or the consultants, getting the budget, proper budget from the different consultants. So these are the major tasks of a client side cost professional. Next into picture comes the consultants. So again, consultants can be for specific works. There might be design consultants, cost consultants, project management consultants. So sometimes a single company will be handling all these different works, different tasks. Or sometimes this will be different consultants for each type of work. There will be one separate design consultant. Then there will be some separately for cost management consulting. The major reputed consultants you might be knowing like in related to design we have a lot of consultants like Jacobs, uh, WSP, then uh, we have DAR, then cost management and project management there are con MNCs like Turner and Townsend, Curry and Brown, Gleeds, Compass Consulting, Acom, Atkins. So these are again they have design consultant also they are into design also they are into project management also again project management also these same consultants also handles project management also so mainly their work involves both into pre-contract and post contracts so during the pre-contract stage almost like preparing the boq the different cost plans during each stage of the project the concept design schematic design the final design so it gets updated, the cost plans gets updated, the budget gets updated, and project management also, the different quality standards, what should be the 
work methodology to, to be used for different types of works and what will be the time schedule for completing the works, what will be the requirement of the different trades, different subcontractors, type of specialist subcontractors. So all these will be carried out by these consultants and how it will be handled, all those documentation will be done during the pre-contract stage. And once the project is finalized and execution starts, these consultants again, they go into site, they they will be having their site offices or the main contractor whoever is handling the project will be coordinating with these consultants for the proper execution of work according to what was prepared during the pre-contract stage the cost consultant will again look if the project is being done according to the budget or not and they will be directly coordinating with the client so they consultant are like the middlemen for the client and the contractor so between them they will be acting and they will be like the major instructors for the project they will be advising the client regarding what is happening and what should be done to manage cost or manage time and again they will be issuing the different instructions to the contractors for proper completion of work as per quality and as per the timelines that has been mentioned in the contract so during the post contract stage again the qs who is in, into the consultant side will be checking the bills of the subcontractors issuing any variation orders checking if it is out of scope or not then budgeting again pricing verifying whether the prices that is being issued by the contractor for the additional works are right or wrong then checking the bills again if it is perfect or not going to the site and understanding what is the situation of the work and understanding how the bill has been made and then preparing the certification according to what is done at site so all these works are carried out by the consultant qs so now next comes the main contractor so this entire project will be contracted to a main contractor who will be the sole person or a sole company that will be in charge of completing the execution of the project. So they will also ha be having a quantity surveyor who will be preparing their invoices, bills and submitting it to the consultant for verification. So they need to be sure that what is the monthly works that is being carried out in the site so accordingly they will be preparing their invoices as per the boq rates the items and again if they feel that the work is not under the original scope then they will be requesting for a variation order to the consultant who again will be checking it and verifying whether it is out of scope or not as per the different contractual documents boq specifications drawings so they will be checking all through it and again the contractor also the contractor QS also needs to go through all these documents to understand whether a particular work is not under the original scope or not. So based on that only that they will get that additional work or else it will be inside their original scope of work. So they will be involved in the invoicing of the projects and again they will be also the main contractor will also be having some subcontractor for specialist works that will be they are the next stakeholder coming up. So again, they need to a contractor QS need main contractor QS needs to verify the subcontractor bills. Then they need to check if it is being properly uh, billed or not as per the works being executed. And again, work orders. The subcontractors will also be issuing their work orders if it is not in their scope. So they need to check it also whether it is out of scope or not. On based on that, they can also you know invoice to the consultant that this is an additional work coming up so this is what a contractor main contractor qs does the so next comes the subcontractors for specialist work so sometimes what happens is the main contractor will give a particular type of work maybe the mep works to a different contractor so they are a sub they becomes a subcontractor of this main contractor the subcontractor qs will be carrying out the invoicing and all those contractual obligations of 
the their particular work so for mep there will be a subcontractor for another specialist or maybe like for testing and commissioning works there will be another subcontractor for just the um, like uh, particular like interior designing works there might be another subcontractor then for lift okay lift comes under mep but still for a particular lift works there will be another specialist subcontractor so like that there will be different subcontractors who will be having a contract with the main contractor sometimes it can also be a nominated subcontractor that is the client who will be nominating this sub subcontractor and they will be required to have an agreement between the main contractor and the subcontractor as per the client instructions so client will give a name like this we need this company to do this particular work so they will give they will tell the main contractor and ask them to get into an agreement with this particular subcontractor so that subcontractor becomes a nominated subcontractor and again for for labors alone manpower there will be some manpower suppliers who will be carrying out work as per the hourly rate so there are again they are also a subcontractor so for manpower alone then there will be a lot of material suppliers so there are they are also kind of subcontractor only but material supplying only they are just supplying the different material that is involved in a project so again the main contractor will be having a contract agreement or a purchase order with them for proper delivery of the particular materials as per the specifications the subcontractor or supplier in uh, contract qs will be invoicing their uh, bills depending upon the materials that is being delivered based on the rates that has been agreed in the purchase order so this is how uh, a construction project moves and how there is a coordination between the different stakeholder these are the major stakeholders there might be again different stakeholders involved also depending upon the size of project depending upon what type of project it is like epc project or a governmental project there will be government organizations involved in it so but in a basic situation these are the major stakeholders that are involved in a construction project the client the consultants again consultants will be like different types of construction there might be for design project management cost consultant quality consultant so there will be different types of consultants then again the main contractor who will be in charge of executing the works then the subcontractor especially subcontractors a subcontractor can also be a nominated subcontractor or a normal subcontractor who will be having a agreement with the main contractor the nominated subcontractor as per the instructions from the client they will be the main contractor will be getting into agreement with the nominator subcontractors and how each quantity survey or the cost professionals in each stakeholders uh, how they manage and what their responsibilities are invoice or the bills during the this is what i am telling in the execution stage once the work is execution for example a uh, a work is going on and for a particular first second month a uh, invoice is raised so that will be raised by a subcontractor who is carrying out that particular work it will be then given to the main contractor main contractor will check verify it and based on their rates and their agreement with the client they will be the main contractor will be raising their invoice based on the work that has been carried out by their subcontractor and giving it to the consultant who the consultant is acting on behalf of the client because client there will not be much people involved in a construction project so that is why they are hiring a consultant for managing all these aspects of a project so the cost consultant will be receiving this invoice from the main contractor so they will be verifying checking and doing all those uh, certifications and from there they will be submitting it to the client advising them that okay we have done the checking and everything this is the amount that is coming for this month so now the client has to pay because they are the developer uh, it is for them that this project is being built and they are the ones who are paying money for this completion of this project and based on the advice from the consultant they will be paying the money to the 
contractor for their works now the contractor will once they get the payment they will be paying the subcontractor depending upon the rates and uh, the agreement that has been under them again the consultant will also be having some fees some charges between uh, the client and the consultant this will be between the client and the consultant and based on that there will be monthly fees for carrying out all this verification all this coordination all all these works for the client so again once that one month is over the consultant will also send their invoice okay this is our invoice for carrying out the works for this project for this month so again client will be paying it directly to the consultant so this is how that cycle happens so hope uh, you got an idea about what happens in uh, the post contract stage of the project now the pre contract stage also it is similar but during this stage uh, the contractor like the main it will be involved till the main contractor so what happens is the client will ask the consultant to make all the the cost plans the budgeting the final boq so once that is ready the consultant will send the boqs to the different contractors who, who will be bidding for this project a request for proposal rfp or request for quotation so based on this boq different five or six contractors will be quoting for that project and whoever quotes in a low price or a better price uh, with good uh, value engineering with good proper you know plans and execution plans they will be awarded this project so this contract during this stage also the contractor what they do is they get the help of specialist subcontractor for different prices and rates so once they get this rfp from the consultant there might be different types of works for which uh they will need the assistance of these specialist contracts so they they will be telling them like please quote for this price so one if we are uh, awarded this project we will be subcontracting this particular work to you so accordingly you can help us during the execution stage of the project so again this is what happens in a pre contract stage of a project so thanks a lot for watching this uh, basic video regarding the stakeholders involved in a construction project keep learning Stay safe. Bye.